Oh, what's up guys? Welcome to probably the greenest, most treesy episode of the whole year. <laughs> I made it to the Redwoods and I have no idea what I'm doing. I mean, you know, I know how to take pictures, but uh, this is much different than the desert. So I don't even know what trail I'm, I think I'm at like Adams Grove or something like that. I don't know, somewhere near the Jedediah Smith, uh, the, the big stuff. But this is like just a random less <laughs> mosquito, less populated area. And sorry, I just can't keep, I, I'm just, I can't keep from looking up. I mean, and I've been here many, many times. You know, I, I used to live in California. I used to come here a lot uh, when I was in the Navy, but that was 20 years ago. And I just can't get enough of it. You know, being in the desert, I can't get enough of it. So what are we doing? I don't really know. I'm scouting because it's like 6.30 in the morning and camera lady is dead to the world. So I have with me, I stole her um, R62 and 24-70, but I also have the big, the big guy. I've got the 500 F4 on the R5. So far, all I've found is a white crown sparrow and a bunch of mosquitoes. <laughs> I have no idea where I'm going. I have no idea what these trails are going to lead, so I've just... I downloaded uh, Backcountry Navigator, just a little, you know, hiking GPS app. So I'm just tracking my my uh, hike. That way I don't get lost because uh, no clue where I'm at or where I'm going to go. So luckily there's a pretty good, ooh, okay. So things I look for when I look for birds, that right there, that's a, Yesterday driving, I saw a ton of Stellar's Jays, and now I don't hear or see any of them. This is a giant wall, tree wall. <laughs> so I'm looking for both landscape and wildlife, of course. Um, just kind of scouting. Unfortunately, we've only got one more day here before we have to head over to Redding area, Mount Shasta area for a workshop. Wow. Mm. There are so many mosquitoes here. There are more mosquitoes that I just walked through in that little grove than there are in my entire state of New Mexico. <laughs> All right, let's go. Uh, I'm gonna shut up until I find something interesting to start. Ooh. I did get a lot of good stuff yesterday, but we were driving and we were like kind of rushed. So we didn't film anything, but I got a couple of images that I liked. Oh, you hear that? Okay, let's go find some stuff. So landscape opportunity number one, check this out. I found this giant tree, this fallen tree that's like nine miles long. There we go. And look at the, the light right there. It's just starting to, to get on it. So, so yeah, I'm gonna shoot like this basically. And then I'm gonna do a couple of panos this way so that I can get, uh, cause I like this big tree here for, for size and scale. And I like how it, I love this path. And I like how this tree on the right, and then this fallen tree on the left and these little trees growing on top of it. I like how those frame the path. And now that I like that little sliver of light coming in.
So let's see if we can capture that. It is dark and I did not bring a tripod and I'm not being a proper landscape photographer. So if you're a proper landscape photographer, then you probably hate me because uh, I'm not shooting at ISO 100. I'm not using a circular polarizer because I left it in my suitcase at the cabin. And uh, I'm just shooting handheld in a dark forest at ISO 1600, 2.8, 50th of a second. <laughs> we'll see how the images turn out. I don't really care because I think they're going to come out nice. Okay, well, I found one more landscape thing and then I found some Wilson's warblers. And there are a lot of spider webs out here. I'm finding all of the spider webs. <laughs> Let me just say it is very difficult to do landscape and wildlife at the same time, especially wildlife when I'm carrying around this giant F4 lens. But, uh, you really need it out here. Really, it is coming in quite handy. Uh, and I got this, I got this new uh, Peak Design strap that uh, is holding it really, really well. And it's like, and it, it slides really well like that. Very happy with it. And I got another one of the Peak Design straps for, for Camera Lady for this guy. It would be a lot easier if Camera Lady were here and not sleeping right now, but <laughs> she really deserves a nap because we were both up for like 20 hours yesterday running off two hours of sleep. It was not fun. All right, I'm gonna keep trying. Now that the sun is starting to come through and light up some things. I'm going to start looking for some interesting compositions, but I might get distracted by birds. did just get a Canada Jay, and I'm very, very excited about that. So it's middle of the day right now. It's like high noon or something. Oh no, it's 1.30. Wow, okay. Yeah, like two hours we were just walking around. We came out here like 11.30. I decided that landscape was just uh, a little too challenging for what I feel like doing right now during the middle of the day. So, uh, birds. Birding is difficult right now too because you know, it's always difficult at midday, but at least like midday down here, like there's not a cloud in the sky, but you know, we're in a forest. So all we have to deal with is like the hot spots, but for birding, like they're mostly in the shade. So there's not a whole lot going on right now. And this is just really difficult. We are just kind of scouting around. We're going to see, uh, if there's any compositions that stick out to us or if there's any good areas for birds to come back to later uh, after after closer to sunset golden hour that's what we're looking for all right well we're going to keep walking through here and uh then i'm going to go get some lunch because i was hungry so let's see what else we can find All right, so it's been a minute since uh, I filmed that last bit that you guys were just watching five seconds ago. <laughs> that was like over a week ago. Um, but I, I have since finished up my workshop that I ran after this. I am now back home in New Mexico, obviously in my studio. 
I had to finish building my new computer, which is finally done and it's beautiful and it's running wonderfully. And I'm very happy, very excited to edit. Uh, and speaking of editing, I wanted to jump in here and just edit a couple of these panos that I already showed you guys. I really liked the way one of them turned out specifically, and I liked both of them enough that I just kind of want to show you the process so that you can see everything that went into it and my thought process for, you know, when I'm putting these things together and overcoming my laziness. I'm not a fix it in post kind of guy completely, but I do understand the value of, of my editing skills and knowing what I can do in the editing room helps me to know what I could get away with or what I could accidentally mess up or whatever in the field. All right, so let's take a look at this panel first. So we're just gonna select all of these. So we got six and I'm just gonna go in here to merge panel. So it kind of looks like there's a little bit of wonkiness here, but I think mostly that's like uh, blurred tree leaves, you know, in front. I could possibly see if Luminar would do a better job stitching, but I think this is all right. So for now, I've just done a little bit of adjusting, pulled some highlights, boost some shadows, you know, that kind of thing. A little bit of vibrance and saturation increase. And then the big thing is here in Color Mixer, I just want to go to the saturation and I'm pulling these blues, purples, and magentas down because there's just foresty, the greens, the overcast, uh, the auto white balance, all the, th the color of this, like the forest path and the browns, there was just a lot of those uh, purples and magentas and, and blues in there. And I just don't want it. And then since I'm at ISO 1600, I'm just going to come in here and do a little denoising. If you do the noise reduction before you do the pano, then you can select them all and it'll do them all. And then you can do the pano from the reduced noise one. But I'm just not going to do that for time's sake. And I've just applied a little bit of luminance, but I'll just do the AI denoising in Luminar. So the first thing I want to do is definitely, I want this to be a 16 by nine, and I'll probably even want a wider one, just because uh, my new monitor is a 43 to 18, 21 to nine ish, somewhere in there. I mean, technically it's probably 43 to 18, but for some reason, Everybody likes to round up to 21 to nine. So anyways, I'll probably do an even tighter one and it'll look really pretty. The first thing I want to do is I just want to clean up some of this stuff down here. This is why I'm not like a forest photographer because I just like forest floors and stuff like that. I would get way too meticulous about it and it's just not good but for the sake of time we'll just say that's good and I'm not <laughs> I'm not gonna mess with this anymore as I keep messing with it okay whatever seriously I'm done now all right so that just you know makes me feel a little bit better the next thing I really want to do, everything else I want to do, I think, is going to be in Luminar. So I'm just going to stamp visible layer this with Control Shift Alt E, and then we got our new layer. And then I'm going to come in here to Neo. This is not sponsored, by the way. Um, I've, this is something that I've had for a long time and I use. That I couldn't care less what anybody else uses. Okay, so I just added a little bit of Orton effect and cleaned some things up and did some sharpening all that stuff in Luminar. Since a lot of people don't have it, I'm just not really gonna show it in this one. Uh, let me know down below if you are interested in that kind of stuff. Sometimes I show it, sometimes I don't, but I always get those comments of people saying, well, I don't have Luminar and uh, that part was worthless to me. It's, it's okay, well, I'll skip it then. But here's kind of a before and here's the after. I, I did crop in just a pinch more and that's it. That's the final one for this one. Um, oh yeah, look, if I come in here and change this to uh, 21 by 9, I don't know. I really like the forced pano perspective here. and it, I mean, it was a pano, but I like cropping the top out even more. It really simplifies it, and it really pushes your eyes in there. 
I could do a little more like dodge this path and stuff like that, but I'm really I'm happy with it. I mean, you can tell my technical mistakes in terms of when I said I handheld and did f2.8, so you know, back here is a little blurry, but you know what? Let's just say that was artistic and um I like it. All right, so let's look at this one here. This one was dark. I'm going to select all these and pano again. All right, so same deal here. I'm just kind of like HDR in this a little bit, you know, drop in the highlights, boost in the shadows because it was it was very dark. I don't want it to look like completely HDR though, like it was dark, so I kind of want to portray that a little bit. I'm going to drop the temperature on this to bring it down it was a little warm somehow and then again the color mixers bringing down these uh, these blues and purples and magentas I think is really helping that and then again with the detail um, I didn't bother with the AI denoising there wasn't too much so just a little bit here and then I'll probably do a little bit in Luminar alright so back up in Photoshop now I think I'm gonna crop this to a 16 by 9 I kinda like that just some of the edges are a little distracting and then I probably would do another one even uh, or oh, even lower like this with a maybe something like that simplifies it a little bit again and that forced thinner pano look obviously this is gonna look horrible on Instagram you know whatever but uh, I don't live on Instagram nobody follows me over there so <laughs> Same deal, so I'm going to bring this in a Luminar and just do a little Orton effect kind of thing and clean some things up, a little sharpening. And there's the before and after. Just livens it up a little bit. If Camera Lady would have been awake, I definitely would have put her in there. Or if I would have had a tripod, I could have put myself in there. Because it just, the scale of this is just ridiculous. Alright, last one here was this one, and this was just one straight shot. So no pano. So I am going to go ahead and do the denoise, uh, the AI denoising on this one because it's ISO 6400. It's dark and I did push the shadows really hard. So uh, this is after it's already denoised and that's manageable. It's much better. So we're just going to clean up the global exposure and all that kind of stuff. Again there. And then same thing with the color. Just boosting that saturation on this one a lot and then uh, fixing the color temperature a little bit. And then one last time again with the, the color mixer is just you can see the magentas in the shadows. Just look in the shadows and see how blues and magentas. So I'm just pulling that out to make it look a little more natural. And then I just want to clean some stuff up, heal some of this stuff out. Mostly that big tree right there. I don't know why. Like It's natural. It's fine. It would have been cool, but... I don't know. I think it looks better without, so I feel better. And then one more run in Luminar. We're going to brighten it up and do some uh, Orton effect again. So the Orton effect really softens like harsh highlights, and since I didn't use a circular polarizer, I got all this waxiness on the leaves and shininess. The Orton effect at least makes it a little softer, a little more ethereal, which to me fits the mood. So that's a little before and after from the Luminar stuff. And you can do all of this in Photoshop, it's just I happen to have Luminar and it makes it a lot easier for me, so that just makes me feel good. Alright, well I know that wasn't a, like a full, complete editing tutorial or anything, but it's just, I just wanted to add a little bit of the editing workflow in there so you guys can see uh, kind of the before and after. Uh, there wasn't much that I had to do to those and um, really the only way I could have made them better was if I would have done better in the field, you know, with tripods and proper apertures and you know, all that kind of stuff. But I think for just what I was doing, handhold, uh, hand holding, I think the, the images came out pretty nice. I've actually got that on my new big monitor as a, as a background. And from a distance, it looks really nice. From up front, uh, the F2.8 is definitely noticeable, <laughs> like from up close. Either way, I still had a great time out there. I think I have enough video to do two more episodes, probably. One more landscape episode where I, I did, I think, uh, put a little more effort into it eventually. And that one was on the Oregon coast. So uh, that one should be coming out here sometime in the next couple weeks. And then one more uh, birding specific one, which I'm very partial to. It's probably 
hopefully going to be my favorite one. Those couple images that I got the day before of uh, the first night that we were there when we got right in at sunset and I think there was one shot that I edited that I liked and it, that was okay. Handheld again, 2.8, uh, 2470, there's last light in there. I don't think I threw this one in yet, but this one was with the 500 millimeter uh, while I was walking around looking for birds and it just the way the light hit, uh, I just thought it was really cool, very minimalist and 500 millimeters. So <laughs> that was kind of cool. Oh, and let me know in the comments, have you ever been to the Redwoods or like any like really dark forests? Have you ever tried to do landscape there? Because I, it's something I've always struggled with. And I mean, the forests are one of my favorite places to be, just, just to be in nature. The smells, the sights, everything, the feel, you know. Uh, but capturing that and translating the 3D to a 2D, I often struggle with. And I'm always going to keep trying. <laughs> because it's super fun but uh it is frustrating sometimes so you know i'm just kind of curious does anyone else like struggle with forest photography like i do basically i just don't want to be alone in that <laughs> all right that's it i'm gonna go get started on that second birding episode because i'm really looking forward to that let me know what you think if you're still here i really appreciate it thanks for watching hit that like button for me that's the best thing you do for the channel you can check out channel memberships if you want extra behind the scenes content and uh, a lot of good stuff there huge shout out to the channel members it's a massive help to me i really appreciate you guys thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one